Hello everybody, it's Sarah and as some of you might know, especially those of you who have been with me for a year and longer, I ended 2021 uh, finishing a project that I had had going on for a few years and through that also accomplishing a goal that actually some readers have every now and again and that was I accomplished a TBR zero. For me specifically that meant that at the end of 2021 I only owned unread books that I had acquired during the year of 2021 which I think was about like 15-ish books. And so I successfully finished a project that I had started a few years earlier. I think I started in 2019 with an unread TBR of 90 books. And obviously at the end of 2021, as I said, I finished my TBR zero. I only owned unread books anymore that I acquired in 2021. And since it's now been about a year since I finished that goal, I thought it's maybe a good time to look at, you know, how things have changed <laughs> within the past year, how my physical TBR is currently looking. So that's what we're gonna do today. Today I will share with you all the books that I have on my lovely TBR card, all the books that are currently unread on my shelves. Although with my TBR zero back then I did not include any non-fiction books. And today I do want to share a few non-fiction books with you. Not all the unread non-fiction books that I have because a lot of those books are just kind of like, I don't know, not urgent for me to read. But the non-fiction books that I am most likely to pick up sometime during this year. And so yeah, that's what we're gonna do today. So I currently have about 40 unread books that I want to share with you. It's actually quite a few less already than it was like three weeks ago at the beginning of the year because all the books that I have read so far this year were books that I had on my physical TBR and I did not buy any books so far this year, although there is one coming in the mail to me currently. Uh, which is The Blind King's Wrath by Asha K. Benka, the last book in the Burning Empires, Burnt Kingdoms. I always forget which is which. Like one of the two series is the one by Tasha Suri, one of the two is Asha K. Banker, but I think it's the Burnt Empire saga is what it's called. Uh, but anyway, that is on its way to me. But aside from that, I have about 40 books that I want to share with you. And also this video is not supposed to be anything along the lines of I want to start a new TBR zero. Like I do not want this TBR to double in the next year. I want to stay at about this size but this is actually a TBR that I feel really comfortable with because it's big enough for me that if I you know, don't feel in the mood for any of the books on my monthly TBRs I have books that I can pick up without going out to buy a new book so I really like that but yeah anyway. I'm not really intending to start a new TBR zero, but I also do not necessarily want this TBR to grow within the next year. And that was already once again a really long intro and so now let's get into the books. I probably won't tell you too much about each book, uh, just the genre, age group and so on. And yeah, maybe also when I bought it, if it was 2021 or 2022. So let's get started with the non-fictions, which actually I don't know when I bought most of these and some of these I have owned longer than 2021. So first I have two books that I think like a few years ago I picked up at the Ethnological Museum in Vienna because they just kind of interested me. The first of those is this one, which originally was written in English, but I can't find the English title inside the book, which usually is the case you can find that. Uh, it's by Laurie Carnath, and it's about women explorers um, throughout the ages, because obviously when we talk about, you know, explorers and travelers and so on, um, as with a lot of elements of history we mostly talk about the men and this book is kind of about the women uh, it has a lot of pictures inside so that's pretty nice uh, i do not know how this book deals with colonialism and stuff because uh, when we talk especially when we talk about 19th century travelers and beginning of 20th century travelers obviously um, whether they be women or men 
it's always a question. I, I have not looked too far into it. I also do not know how Eurocentric or, you know, Western-centric this book is. But I'm still really interested to pick this up and I think it should be a fast read or a fairly fast read once I get to it. And the next book is along a similar vein because actually I picked up a bunch of these books. Like I was at the museum back then with my mom and my mom picked up some of the books and I picked up some of the books. They just had a bunch of books about like women travelers. And the next one is very similar. This one is about a woman traveler who's called Alma M. Collins. So it's a biography of her. Uh, she lived like at the end of the 19th, first half of the 20th century, was traveling throughout the first half of the 20th century, was a writer and anti-fascist. Uh, I had never heard of her and I just, picked it up on a whim because, you know, it sounded really interesting. So hopefully I'll get to it at some point. The next nonfiction I have is this one, um, which is by Albert Londres, um, or by, it's like a collection. As far as I understood, Albert Londres was like a journalist at the end of the 19th, beginning of the 20th century. He was a French journalist. And this is just a collection of his reports from colonial Africa and it's just like as far as I understand it he was kind of anti-colonial but you know it's not really always clear what that means in terms of you know today's understanding of what it is to be anti-colonial but um, I'm just really interested to read this because I think to a certain degree and especially with a modern look and if you understand the context in which these books were written or these reports were written, I think they can be really important to read to understand the context of a time. So yeah, hopefully I'll get to this at some point. Um, which I'm just gonna say this about every book probably, just hopefully I'll get to it at some point. <laughs> then next I have Silk Roads by Peter Frankopan. This is a world history book, like it, it's a history of the world, but not written from a Eurocentric perspective but kind of centering the Silk Roads and centering the B Middle East um, and Far East like Asia um, in terms of telling the story of the world. I have now already started listening to the audiobook of this. I think I read like the first two-ish chapters or something. I'm enjoying it so far but also like I'm not sure if I necessarily always like the writing style of it so I'm gonna see what I think of it once I'm farther into it. Next I have two Edward Said books. The first is of course the book that you will already know on my channel. It's probably my most talked about nonfiction book that I still haven't read and it's Orientalism. And the other book I also have by him is Culture and Imperialism. He was a cultural studies or literary studies person, I think, um, like academic. <laughs> And so he wrote both of these books from the perspective of literary studies, of cultural studies, but like not cultural studies in terms of, you know, social studies, but cultural studies in terms of the arts and cultures. I'm kind of, I don't know um, the English words right now, so uh, you have to bear with me. Uh, but yeah, I'm really interested in reading both of those. First, of course, I'm gonna read Orientalism, but afterwards, culture and imperialism is also pretty high on my TBR, especially for my Orientalism and fantasy video. Next, a book that I am absolutely ashamed that I have not read yet and that I just need to get to, especially because it's not even that long, is Women Race Class by Angela Davis. This is just one of the, you know, central works within intersectional feminism, within just, you know, intersectional anything, really. And I just, I need to get to it. It's like, no excuses, I just need to read it finally. So the next book I have is probably a book by one of, I would say, my favorite nonfiction authors. Um, I've only read one of his books so far. 
Um, and even though it was really big, I loved it. And I'm pretty much interested in picking up all of his books, uh, but I just haven't gotten around to it yet. But the book I'm talking about is um, Measuring Racism, Fighting Discrimination. I think that would be like the English translation of the title. I'm not exactly sure what the English translation is by Thomas Piketty. This is really just an essay. It's like about 100 pages, not even long. It's like 75 pages long. And yeah, it's, I think, pretty much about what it says it is about. Um, but yeah, Thomas Piketty is an economic historian uh, who looks a lot at like the social aspects of economics. And I previously read by him The Capital, which is his most famous book, obviously. And yeah, I just, I think a lot of the stuff that he says is really important. So definitely want to get to this. And then the last nonfiction I have is this one right here, which obviously is on my TBR for January and it's World Making After Empire, The Rise and Fall of Self-Determination. And it kind of looks at decolonial theories and the history of decolonial theories and the development of decolonial theories. And I am so excited to get to this, hopefully. I have 10 days left, I haven't started it yet, but I will do so. I will start it, I promise. Next, I have a book that kind of doesn't fit into nonfiction, but also doesn't fit into fiction, and that is Penguin Classics Only Dull People Are Brilliant at Breakfast by Oscar Wilde, which I believe is just a collection of his quotes. Okay, so continuing on, we're now gonna be talking about my fiction books that I have unread on my shelves, and starting with two books that I am currently reading. And uh, the first book I'm currently reading since 2021. I have not continued picking this up all throughout 2020. And it's my full collection of Grimm's fairy tales. Obviously, I have read most of these already. I have read countless collections of Grimm's fairy tales. I am from Austria, after all. Like, I am from within German-speaking countries. This was my childhood, um, more so than Disney. But this collection is like the full, full collection of every single fairy tale that usually isn't in most other collections. And so, yeah, I'm like halfway through it, uh, I need to just finally bite a bullet and continue it. Then I am also currently reading The Art of Prophecy by Wesley Chu, which is the first book in the War Arts saga. And yeah, I'm going to talk about it in my wrap up. Um, in terms of my thoughts, I'm about... A third, a fourth of the way-ish through. Um, so yeah, we'll see, we'll see. So the rest of the books I'm gonna talk about, I'm gonna talk about in no particular order because I don't have them, you know, sorted into my TBR card in any particular order. Mostly I just have all the big books together and then all the smaller books together. So yeah, yeah just, let's just randomly get through it. Actually, this one I'm also kind of reading currently. Like I started it at some point last year and I have two dog ears in here. Um, I started it at some point last year and then I just didn't continue so now I am like 40 pages into it and that is The First Woman by Jennifer Nansumbuga Makumbi. This is kind of magical realism by a Ugandan author. Next I have a retelling by an author who I actually said I wouldn't read by anymore because the one book I read by her I wasn't particularly a fan of. But also she's one of the few authors who doesn't just write the 50th retelling of like any part of the Troy or Odyssey or anything along those lines. So you know when I saw this I kind of really wanted to pick it up and that is The Children of Jocasta by Natalie Haynes because I don't know I just I'm really interested to see um, what an author can do with like a retelling where part of the retelling is Oedipus, so you know, or Oedipus Rex, uh, I guess. But yeah, very interested in this. Next I have a final book in the series and that is Maker's Curse by Julie Canavan, which is the fourth book in the Millennium's Rule series and definitely a book that I want to pick up soon just so I can finish the series and this is Adult High Fantasy, a book where I'm not necessarily sure what subgenre this belongs into exactly is The Library of the Unwritten by H. A. Heckwith. I mostly picked this up because I heard some good things about it and it sounded somewhat interesting from the back. I think it's like urban paranormal fantasy or paranormal fantasy 
Um, it's not high fantasy, I believe, but I'm not 100% sure. By the way, aside from First Woman, all of these books were bought in 2022. Uh, the next one was not. The next one I have owned since 2021, and that is Best Served Cold by Joe Abercrombie. I just finally need to continue on with the First Law world. I don't know why I haven't, because I actually did really enjoy the First Law trilogy, but I don't know, for some reason, I just didn't pick it up. I wasn't in the mood for it. Who knows why? Then I have a rare science fiction for my shelves, uh, which I bought for my r slash fantasy 2022 bingo. And that is Ancillary Justice by Anne Leckie, which is the first book in a trilogy that I do not know the name of. Also, since it's for my r slash fantasy video, <laughs> it's obviously gonna be read until April. At least I hope so. Also, don't mind me, this is going to be a long video. Uh, so the next book I have is so far the last Silvia Moreno Garcia book that, you know, it, it's the last chance for now I'm giving her because Silvia Moreno Garcia, I have read four of her books so far. I have loved, loved, loved one that was one of the favorite books in the year that I read it. The other ones I was just at most lukewarm about so far, so I'm gonna see how I feel about this book if I'm once again just lukewarm. I'm just, I think I just have to decide that Silvia Moreno Garcia is not the author for me. But the book I'm talking about is The Beautiful Ones, and yeah, this is I believe also high fantasy and it's also a romance. Then I have another high fantasy and that is Hall of Smoke by H. M. Long, which is a first book in a series as well. I I'm once again not sure what the series is called though. Next I have another book that I believe belongs more in the category of magical realism. I'm not sure anymore if I bought this in 2021 or 2022, although I believe it was at the very beginning of 2022, and that is Build Your House Around My Body by Violet Coppersmith. And this is a book by a Vietnamese author or Vietnamese American author one or the other. A sequel to a first book I actually didn't like, but you know, I got it for like two euros off of a used book site, so it's fine. Uh, is Prisoner of the Iron Sea Tower by Sarah Ash. This is the second book in the Tears of Archman series. And yeah, as I said, I didn't particularly like the first book, which was I think Lord of Snow and Shadows, but this one was cheap. It's high fantasy. It's by a woman, so, you know, I just want to give her a second chance. And maybe a third, because we all know I'm a completionist. Then this is a book, this is actually the one book <laughs> that, or one of the few books that is not from 2021 or 2022. See, I have my bookshelves here, but at my mom's flat, I also kind of still have a bookshelf uh, with some books that you know, I used to love a lot and I didn't want to get rid of. And for some reason, I still had some unread books on the shelf as well, uh, where I was like, yeah, maybe, maybe at some point I will pick them up. And I just bit the bullet and dragged some of those books back here. And one of those books is The Serpent Bride by Sarah Douglas, which is the first book in the Dark Glass Mountain series. And yeah, Sarah Douglas is, I think, one of those fantasy authors like women in fantasy that somewhat was popular at the beginning of the 2000s, like that at least had the chance to publish quite a few books. So yeah, we'll see what I think of this. Then I have a high fantasy short story collection to see if an author really is for me, and that is That Way Lies Camelot by Chani Wirtz. I obviously read the Empire or finished the Empire trilogy by Chani Wirtz last year, and before I jump into her like one big series that I believe is like Wars of Shadow and Light or something along those lines. I just wanted to pick up a short story collection to see if her writing is for me. Uh, she also has some standalones that I might pick up first, but you know, this once again was really cheap on the used book website, so I just bought it. Next, I have a book that I picked up in 2021 in a used bookstore in Amsterdam, and that is Southern Fire by Juliet E. McKenna. This is the first book in the Elder Brushen Compass series. I just haven't gotten around to reading it yet. You know, just 
it be like that sometimes. I'm sure we can all relate. I have two more books that I picked up in that same bookshop in 2021 in Amsterdam and that is The Company of Glass and The Riddled Knight by Valerie Leith, which are the first two books in the Averian cycle, Averian trilogy, I don't know. Um, yeah, I picked those up because I love those covers. They're just so campy and beautiful and like, why can't we have these fantasy covers back? Please, like, look at them. Three more books I also got used are Kushiel's Skian, Kushiel's Justice and Kushiel's Mercy by Jacqueline Carey. All three of those books belong to the Imriel trilogy, which is the second trilogy in the Kushiel's legacy cycle, series, whatever you want to call it. Obviously this year I am hosting a read-along along with some other lovely booktubers over on my Discord, my book club Discord. I will leave that link down below for all of Jacqueline Carey's books. I mean, we'll start with the first two trilogies for now because we're taking two months per book. But yeah, so if you want to join us, check that out. Uh, and yeah, I'm really happy I have all of these books, although it kind of annoys me that the first book is white and the other two aren't. So sorry if the frame is slightly different. I had to change my battery and while doing that I realized that I forgot about a non-fiction book that I still have on my shelves unread that I want to get to somewhat soonish. And that is this one right here, which the English title is Burning the Books, A History of Knowledge Under Attack by Richard Overden. And this is just about the history of, you know, archives. I guess a little bit and how archives were always places of keeping knowledge but also how because of that they were constantly places that were under attack because obviously they you know kept a lot of different knowledge. So we're now getting into the last 10 books uh, that I have on my physical TBR. The first of those 10 is Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte. I wanted to read this for Halloween last year because I always kind of read like a gothic novel or gothic adjacent novel in like October. Didn't get around to it uh, because I was still in my reading slump. Hopefully I will get around to it this year. So I think with one exception the last books that I have to talk about are all high fantasy and most are adult although I do have two YA books as well. First I have The Shadow of What Was Lost by James Eilington which is the first book in the Licanius, Licanius, Licanius trilogy. And yeah, I don't know, the concept of this series sounds really interesting to me, which is why I wanted to pick up the first book. And we'll see what I think of it. Another first book that I picked up is The Bone Season by Samantha Shannon. This one I picked up because it was on my 12 books by 12 friends that I got at the end of, or that, you know, a lot of people recommended me at the end of 2021. And I never read it in 2022. We'll see if I can get around to it in 2023. Um, yeah, we'll see. Next, I have a sequel that I maybe will even still pick up in January, and that is Heart of the Sun Warrior by Su Lin Ten, which is the sequel to Daughter of the Moon Goddess. And also, it's just a duology, so this will finish the duology. So, yeah, I have the motivation to pick this up soon. And also I really enjoyed the first book, so that's always good. Next I have an Illumicrate book and one of the two YA books that are on my physical TBR and it's The Luminaries by Susan Dennard. I just love the copy of this book. Also it's really hefty. I don't know why I didn't notice that before, but it's really hefty and it's really gorgeous and it's really beautiful. And am I all that interested in this book in particular, no, not necessarily, but I really like the items that were in the box with this one, so, you know, it's whatever. That's why I got the box, not for the book. <laughs> I have one second Greek myth retelling on my physical TBR, and that is Ithaca by Claire North, which is obviously a retelling of the Odyssey, but from the point of view of Penelope, so Odysseus' wife, and what's going on while he's gone in, you know, in what's it called in Troy and then later on his uh can you call them travels I'm just gonna call them travels now so yeah very interested to see 
what this is like because I've heard a lot of good things about it. One of the now oldest books on my TBR probably now is The Bone Shard Emperor by Andrea Stewart. The reason why I didn't read this when I got it is because shortly after I got this it was announced that the release for the third book would be pushed back almost a year and so I did not want to read this and then have to wait two years or almost two years for the third book and so I just you know kept it until this year now because now the third book is coming out quite soon which is I believe the bone shard war next one I have some hefty books left is the first binding by R.R. Virdi and this one is another adult high fantasy I've kind of heard mixed things about it like from some people I've heard a lot of positive things and from other people I've heard that it's a little bit too slow and that there's not enough story in this book and so yeah I'm really interested to see what I'll think about it because I do often like a slow book uh, I also don't mind if there's not that much story as long as the characters are engaging so yeah, I'll see what I think about this and I definitely want to get to this this year. This next one is also a last book in a series. However, I am waiting for a friend to read the book previous to that so we can then buddy read this one. And that's Speaking Bones by Ken Liu, which is the last book in the Dandelion Dynasty. It's it's also, it's a, it's a chunky boy. Uh, it's about a thousand pages, a bit over a thousand pages, 1050 pages. Uh, but yeah, I really enjoyed the first three books in the series and I'm sure I will love this one as well. I just have to wait for a friend to finish reading uh, The Veiled Throne, I think was the third one. And then the last book on my physical TBR is another Illumicrate book and another YA book. It's like I have already read all the Illumicrate books I have that are adult. I just haven't read the YA ones yet. Uh, and that is The Whispering Dark by Kelly Andrew, which I believe is a standalone. This one is also just a really, really pretty book. Like, Illumicrate books are so gorgeous. I love them, which is why I also just love owning them, because obviously, even if I'm not 100% interested in the story, I always know I will get a pretty edition of a book, and I am a book collector after all. So, yeah. This one is the last book on my physical TBR. So that was it. That was all the books that are currently on my physical TBR. As I said, I think in total it's like 41 or 42 books currently. And so tell me in the comments down below which books should I prioritize for the next few months in getting read off of my physical TBR. Are there any books that I mentioned that you've already read and really enjoyed. If you enjoyed this video, maybe think about giving me a thumbs up and also maybe subscribing. All the links to my social media as well as to my book club of Queens, Witches and Valkyries, where we read one adult high fantasy book written by a woman or gender queer person per month, will be left linked down below, so go and check those out. And I hope I'll see you very soon. Bye!